where it all began a place in the northern sky. Then we came to the planning uh, and the beginning of um, a blaze in the northern sky. Well, what I could say was the Gold Lord Owl now I was talking about was supposed to be recorded like a year after Soulside Journey. <coughs> that means like summer 91. But as I told you, we had this whole Gold Lord album done, but we just said, no, we're not playing that anymore. We're going for the primitive, like, stuff, you know, that we still like, and, uh, but that was, like, in March or something in, in, in uh, 91, so, uh, so we just had, like, three, four months to, to, to do what we really wanted to do, so we recorded a place in the northern sky instead in 90, summer 91. Still, though, a couple of riffs, a couple of death metal riffs, came into that fucking album because we had so little time to do an entire album people still believe that A Blazing Northern Sky is a bona fide black metal album that all the riffs there are black metal but I mean at least six riffs seven riffs eight riffs I don't know really fucking death metal but we played it in a black metal style and I tried to crush the riffs as hard as I, I could on the drums to 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 make them sound un death metalish and uh, that's what resulted in the Blaze in the Sky. <coughs> well then. We lost um, a band member from uh, rehearsing and finishing Goat Lord till the recording of A Blaze in the Northern Sky. And uh, that was uh, Doug Nielsen because he was really into the technical death metal we played at the time of Soulside Journey and Goat Lord. But then we tried to, to reason and say, like, no, we don't want to do this 14 part slash 16 beats stuff anymore. <clears throat> We're more, uh, going more for the juggler and playing primitive stuff uh, inspired by all, well, whatever. Hell on Earth. Old Bathory. So, springtime 91. We didn't feel much for anyone. We just bashed out some fucking primitive shit playing the instruments, not hitting the instruments, yes. Going for pretty much total misanthropic black metal. Which was really not what Peaceful signed us for, but whatever. Well, we did that fucking A Blaze in Northern Sky album. We pulled. Uh, the bassist in to do the because he's he'd been win uh, with us <coughs> he'd been with us uh, playing bass for uh, the more primitive songs as well so well he could do the what do you call it the session bass for that album he wanted to do it on this flashy motherfucking rack he had we just put him up with some sort of fucking whatever small PV stash with fuss on it we got to play that Pretty intense, we just used a local studio. The studio that um, Mayhem used for uh, the, uh, the Death Crush album. Same studio, pretty cool technician we had. And we just bashed it out. That became the more or less brutal, total black metal shit that uh, became A Blaze Not in the Sky. After that, Well, we had to send the fucking tape to uh, to Peaceville, and uh, Peaceville said, 
gave me a call and said, what the fuck is this? And I said, this is fucking black metal, man. And they were like, we signed you up as a fucking death metal band. What the fuck are you doing here? And I was, we got tired of that shit. Look around you. Look what death metal has become. It's like nothing. It's like people in uh, colored clothing talking about uh, political PC stuff, you know? For me, death metal, and for us, death metal was always about something extreme, and now it's like, hey, vote, voting or whatever. So, Basil said, we have to remix this motherfucker. And I was going like, why do you have to remix it? And they said like, well, this doesn't sound like anything. Like, this is just, this sound is too weak. And I'm going like back, like, this is what black metal should sound like. And I said, if you don't like it, we'll take it down to your own fucking label, Death Like Silence Productions. Then Peaceful said, well, it definitely won't look good for us if a new signed band is going to leave our label. So, okay, we'll release this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so they released A Blaze in Northern Sky as we wanted it to be and I think no one really regrets that uh, we also have to remember that the, um, <clears throat> the period we're talking about was uh, it was very early in the black metal history so um, you early know, in the second wave yeah in the second wave definitely but uh, uh, it's no surprise that it came as a shock to people uh, and especially labels, uh, which heard this for the first time. Strange, you know? Yeah, I guess. But um, with Peaceful, luckily we had a pretty fucking great distribution. So the album just had like a black and white cover, which was like his at the time. I mean, everyone wanted like colory paintings, <laughs> you know, wimp stuff on the. On the album covers or some gore stuff or whatever uh, we went for a slightly grimmer approach <laughs> to say the least and uh, I guess in hindsight you could say that people noticed that but nowadays a lot of people say that oh that's a fucking classic album but then I don't know I think it was ambivalence surrounding that album A Blaze Northern Sky anyway we had no time to to look back when we recorded A Blaze Northern Sky album that was done settled it's going to be released on Peaceville okay we just moved straight on to Under Fearful Moon and this time we had all the time we needed one fucking year to do only black metal But at the time, you know, uh, black metal became more, I mean, th that was the music we more and more listened to. And um, I mean, remember old Slayer stuff like we heard before. I was totally into to Slayer before even joining Dark Throne. So, I mean, the, the more dark side of the music, the more dark side of metal uh, became more and more important in our lives really so uh, it was natural to to just jump off the all the Bermuda shorts uh, filthy uh, death metal bag and uh, start playing what really meant something to us so uh, a place in the northern sky start growing um, we first thought of it like a mini album but uh, we've never been into singles, mini albums, maxi singles, whatever the fuck is. Uh, yeah, no way. Full length albums, all the things that matters. Uh, so uh, we decided then to go ahead, skip Goat Lord, do a full length album named A Blaze in the Northern Sky. 
Uh, I mean, uh, again, I remember uh, our old bassist, Dog, uh, did some some riffs to to A Blaze in Northern Sky. He didn't like our new approach to, to the metal here. Um, uh, we told him to leave. Uh, he could play session bass, of course, because he had something to do with A Blaze in Northern Sky, obviously. So uh, we thought that uh, he should be a part of it as a se session bassist. Mm. So, uh, yeah. The recordings went on in the, in the um, creative sound. Uh, what's the name of the studio? Uh, really good studio. I remember Mayhem recorded the Death Crush there, as you said. Fenris. They were drunker than us. Yeah. Uh, as I have heard later on. Yeah, I mean, uh, but you were quite drunk as well, Fenris, as I remember. Not when we record, though. No, oh, no, no, no. Also, one of the Morkham demos were, was recorded in Creative. That's right! Yes. Uh, and that Morkham demo was fucking brilliant. I liked it very much. It's not bad, man. Yeah. No. So, um, we did go ahead. Uh, Doug, was, uh, Doug Nielsen was quite, uh, you know... Uh, He'd been kicked out all, uh, already. Yeah, he'd be kicked out already, so he was uh, laying very low in the terrain. <laughs> uh, but uh, we did go on with the recordings, and I, I also remember the rehearsals uh, to A Blaze in North Sky was was very good experience. Yeah. Um, again, I felt at that time that we were being very alone. We, uh, I did know about Mayhem uh, and Mortem. But, uh, you know, the, the metal scene in, in Norway was very small, very um, limited. This was like the summer of 91, I think Morten was mm. changed the name to Arcturus and did some other stuff then. Oh. Uh, we felt pretty much alone, I think, and uh, after recording the album, it was just, well, if someone likes it, okay, if someone doesn't like it, fuck off. Yeah. Like that, and uh, we had uh, nothing really happened after that uh, recording, did it? I mean, we didn't go on tour or interviews or anything. No, no, no. What happened? We're going on to uh, under Funeral Moon here. Yeah, I mean, uh, during the recording of a place, we have a engineer ready to the book guy, you know, he didn't want to turn the knobs too much. But he did a brilliant job, and uh, I think uh, the balance in the sound was was uh, right where we wanted it to be. Um, uh, nothing happened, you know. Uh, Doug Nielsen gone for good. We're starting the rehearsals to Under Funeral Moon. Stop. 